I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods Volcano Block. So I am back, but this time I am sieving dirt because I'm going to need a lot more of this to move on into the future. Um, and to do this, the way I'm actually doing it is I'm making coarse dirt using the gravel and the prior dirt that I have. And then when I sieve it, I actually get a bunch more dirt. Of course, I got my inventory filled up because I dumped all the coarse dirt out. Because the problem with this is, well, you get dirt in return. And if you place this dirt in, it will autofill the other dirt in here as well. And thus sieve dirt and your whole inventory gets filled up. Uh, so it's really nice to just place a bunch of coarse dirt down and get it done this way. But this is a great way of getting dirt early on. And uh, you guys, of course, let me know in the comments. And I do appreciate that. Now, the reason I needed all that dirt was because I needed a sieve for this mycelium in which I have now got myself some brown mushrooms. And this gets us slime. Uh, and so, yes, it does take a little bit to do this. But as you can see, I am getting a little bit of mushroom. And of course, to get the other mushroom, uh, we are going to need to take the brown mushroom block, I believe, and convert that over. Um, and so over here, I have everything set up and I'm just refilling this and getting the witch water that I need. Uh, so all of these are going to get us the brown mushrooms. Now, a singular brown mushroom in here should get us a full block of slime, which is going to be amazing. And then we can take this and it gets us nine slime balls. So getting the slime, definitely worth it. And it was a, part of, a big part of our quest but uh, did require a lot more dirt. So thankfully that early little tip helped me uh, jumpstart this process. Now, all of these little tips are just going to help us get into other mods, really. Uh, a lot of mods do require things like slime and, and all of these resources that we're generating. And that's really the whole reason why we're, generate th we're generating them in the first place, right? Is uh, so that way we can get into other mods to make these processes easier to get into. But look at this. We now have these mushrooms. Hopefully we can... Uh, get some red mushroom as well. Uh, I have a feeling that like later on, we're going to be able to easily make a ton of these. I don't know if there's like uh, botany pots in here. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of pots. So we are going to probably have to manually grow or use thermal to do it uh, or way of doing it. But yeah, this is a great way to get these basic red mushrooms and stuff that we are going to need throughout our journey. So I'm glad that we have them. And now we have a way to get slime balls. So Let's get on with what we actually need to do today. And that is, well, we need to start producing netherrack, which is going to be a, uh, a product of lava mixed with redstone and instone, which is going to be a product of lava mixed with glowstone. So these two things uh, are going to net us some other materials, such as materials that come from the sand, or sorry, materials that come from the nether and many things like that. Uh, now, I don't know if this actually has a nether in it. I would assume we do because we're not in the nether, but it doesn't show in the quest anything about a nether, um, like making a portal and telling you that you can do that. I guess we'll just have to make obsidian eventually and do this. But lava, let's talk about lava. How are we going to get lava? Um, Yeah, how do we get lava? Um. Okay, okay, I'm just messing with you. No, but for real, extracting lava is not going to be too bad. I think we can use a hose pulley. We're going to need kelp. Uh, I don't know if we did get any kelp, but this is going to be a different sort of process, I think. Yes, we're going to need a waterlogged sieve in order to do this. Um, and uh, this is a good example of me showing how a waterlogged sieve actually functions. So we just need to break our sieve here to get waterlogged sieves because we're going to have to place water in here in order to do this process. But yes, a hose pulley is what we're going to hopefully use to infinitely pull lava from this entire area of lava. So by simply placing some water inside the middle here, I am going to fill this whole area up with water. Uh, and then we can replace our sieves and these in the middle are considered waterlogged. Um, of course, not the outside ones, but these ones here are. And all we're going to need to do is, I think it was uh, to get kelp, right? We just needed to sieve sand. So here we go. Oh, we're getting tons of stuff as well because we are on iron mesh. So we're getting all of these, uh, yeah, coral larvae. And this stuff right here can be used to make coral. By the way, if you're wondering how to make seawater, all you have to do is take the water the same way we make witch water, just put sand underneath it. And that will produce uh, seawater. 
which is how you're going to be getting some of these materials. So I just accepted the create little section here because this is what we're gonna be getting into. Uh, and it wants us to make andesite alloy. That's super simple. And we're actually gonna need andesite alloy anyways, but it gave us a wrench, which is nice. We don't have to go through the process of like crushing down uh, gold in order to get that. Uh, so this hose, hose pulley is going to need copper. Uh, and this is the first time utilizing some of this copper. So I'm going to go ahead and not crush it down. I'm just going to go ahead and smelt it. We don't need a lot of it. Um, and we're going to need our hammer for other reasons. Actually, we're going to need a, a very specific hammer, right? Because this requires a copper plate. Now, there's a couple ways we can go about doing it. But I think this is the cheapest way. We have the other hammer. That hammer from all the mods we can actually use to double our ore output. Uh, but with this hammer, this is used for immersive engineering normally, but it can also make plates. It's not super effective at doing it, but it can make plates. So all of our copper, we can hopefully get this put together. For one, we're going to need to place down a log. We're going to need to strip the log, and then we need to use a copper on it to get ourselves a copper casing. That sort of jump starts our little process here. But then we need to make ourselves a plate. And so now we should have everything. We have our kelp all smelted up that we needed and we can make ourselves a hose pulley. So this is where we're going to need andesite alloy. Um, and uh, we're going to need andesite alloy for this hand crank. Um, and that's just going to be iron nuggets. And this is this is super straightforward. Iron nuggets to make ourselves andesite alloy. That allows us to make a hand crank. Uh, so this is everything we really need, uh, minus pipes, to get lava infinitely. Uh, and from what I've heard, from you guys is that lava power generation has been kind of nerfed uh which makes sense uh of course because we are in a lava area but also at the same time doesn't make sense because you would think at this point they would have found ways of utilizing all of this lava for power it's like an infinite lava source so uh anyways <laughs> i digress um we will end up moving forward anyways so how are we going to use this effectively well i was thinking that uh, right about here we place our hose pulley and we got to put this in a, the proper direction. Uh, I think if I turn this way, the hose pulley, nope, I got to rotate it the other way. I think our wrench might be able to rotate it. There we go. It rotated. Let's rotate it one more time. Uh, Maybe I, oh, I got to click the top. So what I want is I want the face right here facing into this because this is where we're going to actually pump out of. Uh, and then back here, we just need to put the hand crank on. Now, underneath, we do need to monitor this. And wow, okay, that was a little laggy. We need to monitor this down here uh, and and kind of watch what our uh, our hose is actually doing. Um, so yes, when we click down, we're going to see it continue to go down and down and down. And we just need to stop cranking this once it stops moving. So then, then at that point, we know it's all the way down to the bottom. And this should provide an infinite amount of lava for us that is incredibly cheap to get. So tons of free lava and we just pump it out from just a normal pipe from this block. So we're almost there depending on how far down this goes. I guess it really doesn't matter. This thing will reach to the bottom regardless. I don't even know if you need it all the way at the bottom to be fair. You just need it, I think, in the lava. But anyways, um, I want to get this the rest of the way down, I guess. Ah. So I did get it all the way down, and then it says workout session because we have drained our health. Uh, or drained our... No, I didn't get it all the way down, but I have technically drained all of my hunger because using the hand crank will drain your hunger. So after nearly two full health bar or hunger bars, I don't even know what you call a meat sickle pops bar, um, <laughs> after going through all of that twice, it now hit the bottom. Um, so we should be able to use this. It should be bottomless. I mean, we are surrounded by what seems like an, an infinite amount of lava, right? Um, so I just need to make some pipes. And I think making them from the pipes mod is going to be one of the cheapest. However, they're not the prettiest looking pipes in the world. Uh, they are, however, going to be the cheapest, 100%. So now with our fluid pipes, we are probably going to need a basic upgrade. Uh, it might be worthwhile to at least make the basic version. Uh, it will work without it, but it's, yeah, it's going to be a little bit faster to do it this way. So let's go ahead and get these pipes hooked up. These are both going to fill these stone barrels with lava, hopefully. And uh, we are going to need a pipe wrench. And so I just shift right click. Oh, there it is. And uh, as you can see, it already filled them up. But if we put the upgrade in, it should hopefully fill it a bit faster. 
And so these are ready to go. The only thing I need to do now is either place this on the side or on the top. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and then give it some sort of material. Now I have a hopper placed on the bottom that is going to pull out the uh, the material and it's going to send that into this. So go ahead and do that real quick. Just have to put the hoppers in. Bam. And now the result of the craft the uh, that we're going to be doing the operation here should go in here. So there we go. We got this all cleaned up. Get the last barrel on and bam. This automation is also going to be used for the other things like soul sand, which I believe requires this water, this witch water. And so we can actually set that automation up in the same way. Uh, so to make netherrack, we're going to need redstone. So I have a little bit of redstone here. Don't have a whole lot just yet, but uh, we once we get things up and automated, we'll have tons of it. And then we have some glowstone. So this should get us both of those materials. Um, so it really doesn't matter which one I put it in. Both of these are going to automate. And as you can see, we now have netherrack and we now have in stone, which should now complete our little quests here. Um, and then the one for in stone, for some reason, oh, this is crushed in stone. So we do have to crush these materials to sieve them. So they're going to get crushed like that. And there we go. Now we've gotten that one completed. And the netherrack one is done. And that leads us into what will end up being automation. Um, and this is where everything is going to get a lot easier, I think. So how do we go about getting the automation set up for this? Well, first, let's actually get the water portion set up so we can also get the access to soul sand. Now, when it comes to the infinite water, I think a good old fashioned sink is the way to go. Uh, it is still the best way to get water. And uh, we're going to use the exact same setup. However, we're going to be placing a, a sink here to get our infinite water. And uh, then we just need to use a wrench on this. So there we go. And as you can see, it fills up with water. I don't even know if we really need an upgrade on this, uh, as it just seems incredibly fast. And so, for example, right here, this is just producing tons of clay. Uh, and then we can also use this for witch water, I believe. Um, however, hoppering the items out is not going to be feasible uh, in this particular form. Instead, what we're going to have to do, because there's going to be a block of mycelium underneath this, uh, I think we're going to need to use a pipe that sends it into this barrel from the side. And so I think this will work if I place this down and then just hit that there. Yes. And as you can see, that's going to be doing its conversion. Um, it's not super fast, but if we put some sand in here, the sand will only go into the barrel once it is ready. There it goes. And then it turns into soul sand. Then we need to extract with an item pipe from the top. And that should pull the soul sand out. There you go. Perfect. And now we have soul sand and we are producing that now as well. These are all like basic resources that we're going to need a lot of later on. Look who shows up over here and look who has something that's actually really nice for once. Let's see. Oh, go. Nope. Nope. How do I interact with you? You're invisible. There we go. Look at this. Eyes of Ender for two emeralds. That's actually really nice. I'm going to buy those. So I got at least three of them. What a deal. Yeah, that was a pretty darn good deal. But, you know, as things go, um, deals are only as good as the materials you have available. And so, well, goodbye, sir. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I get enjoyment out of that, but I do. So now with all of that set up and done, we can now start working on, well, the big part. And that is hopefully getting some auto sieving started. Uh, and this is going to be a slow grind, a slow process, but it will ramp up very quickly. And the next thing I know, I'm going to have every resource automated and it's just going to be smooth sailing from that point. Now in the quest, it wants us to make the basic iron generator first is kind of what it's recommending us to make. And it's not a bad generator, so definitely worth making this. And that will, of course, forward your quest line as well down into the next tier, leaving these as some side options as well. Uh, you can also go Mechanism, or you can go Hour of Tools. We'll be getting into those mods eventually. Uh, but just for some basic power, this is going to be just fine. And I think the first thing that we should probably make is the Flux Sieve, because hammering the stuff is not super difficult. I think the hardest part is just standing there and sieving all of the items. As I'm prepping up for items, I normally never show stuff like this. It just, it's a lot, you know? It is a lot to uh, to grind out all of this stuff. And you guys don't normally get to see all of this stuff happening behind the camera, you know? 
it's uh, it's a lot of stuff that is happening off camera that you you really don't get to see. But uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm literally just placing it all in. And uh, I think the best way to do this is what I'm doing is I'm turning my magnet off. I'm tossing out all of my gravel to the side. And then I fill my entire inventory with cobblestone for right now. Um, and then I turn my magnet back on and it allows me to just keep the gravel in my inventory uh, in that first slot because there's no mod that auto refills your inventory. And so all of these materials are just building up. And as soon as I'm done sieving everything, I can just take all of the items that are in the giant ball underneath me. Also not the most lag friendly thing in the world, uh, but it is working. Uh, and I can use that to just uh, put into my system. I think that's gonna be pretty uh, pretty straightforward and is uh, working out really well, especially early on, saving a lot of the grind. As right now, I am just simply harvesting iron because I needed enough iron in order to make the actual sieves and all those other machines. So now at this point, I have, I think everything I need in order to make this. And then we also have our generator uh, inside my backpack and we have plenty of coal to get started with this. I just need to get myself a little bit of a platform made out. Well, I guess we could do it over here for right now to just kind of get the idea of how things are going to go. Uh, because we won't need our sieves anymore. Yeah, we definitely don't need all of these sieves. Well, at least not as many of them anyways. We're still going to need them. We're just not going to need as many. Uh, so as you can see, it does have a working progress, but we do need to give it some fuel. And we should start to see redstone fill up. And uh, once we complete and I guess craft all of these, we'll actually get a upgrade for this. But by default, if we go ahead and take a mesh. We should be able to put the mesh in here. That'll be an iron mesh. And then we just give it the material such as, I don't know, we can do gravel. Do I have any leftover gravel? Let's do sand. I have some leftover sand. Let's see how fast it is with its default operation. Cause I know it's not super fast with its default operation. As you can see, it just went once, but here's the thing with the sieve. It inputs into the inventory that is below it. Um, so that means we are going to need like a barrel or something to put this in for now. I think it automatically extracts it and sends the output result into the bottom. If I remember, yeah, as you can see, missing inventory, even though it was still working, which seems kind of weird that it will still consume the materials, even if there's no machine underneath. But as you can see, it just did the sieving while we were just standing here and is working. Um, and we just need to, uh, we'll have to attach some sort of inventory to it or a uh, power source to like the side to get it to fully work. Seems pretty good. Now, all we need is to craft up the hammer. And then we also need to make this thing, which is the, uh, the flux capacitor, uh, which is, I believe RF powered automatic compact. Yeah. Compactor. <laughs> so this is going to compact things for us. However, it is quite expensive to also make. But I think it's kind of worth it. We'll end up getting a gold upgrade, even though we could just make these. Now, the nice part about this whole setup here is that we can actually put these upgraded meshes in. We don't need to make a bunch of meshes. <laughs> well, we'll need a mesh for each material type, uh, but we don't need a, a ton of meshes like we have here. So we won't need as many diamonds or emeralds. Now, in order to make the last thing uh, that we need in our quest line here, the flux capacitor, the last thing we're going to need, well, we're going to need, I think it was a comparator, right? A comparator. And that requires nether quartz. And well, to get nether quartz, we need to sift that soul sand that we had over here. And so we can just simply put that in and that should start processing it. And hopefully we'll end up getting ourselves some soul sand. And we might even get, uh, depending on how good this is. Let's see, on the emerald, we might even get some gas tears and some nether wart. And just like that, there's the redstone comparator that we need and also the hopper that we're going to need. And bam, we have ourselves the flux compactor. And uh, that is everything that was needed in this section. So we can now get, ooh, get a random reward, which is redstone dust in that regard. And we got an oak log. Man, I am not getting lucky here. There's some good stuff that looks like it shows up in this. Ah, uh, but I guess we'll have to wait, but we're going to need another chance and we got cooked chicken. I mean, I am hungry, so that, that does help a little bit, uh, but we can now take this upgrade here. We should be able to put this in, but what I really want to do is I want to use this and I want to automate the production of our gravel sieving. I think that'll be a great thing to have going is uh, just a simple 
setup that automates gravel. Now for the automation, all I'm going to do is have a uh, an iron generator here and I just have my pipe extended out here so we can work with that. I need to know where I want my chest to ultimately be. And I think right here is gonna be a good spot for that. Uh, now, working backwards, we're going to need to use a sieve on top of this. This is ultimately going to be the final processing area. And the sieve automatically sends the items down below to the bottom of it. Now, I think you can pipe out of these still in different uh, different ways. Uh, but for right now, this is going to be how we do this. Now, the next step is where things get a little bit weird. Uh, we need to power this from the side, or we need to power this from some sort of source. So, as you can see, it is receiving power. But... This machine right here, it, it doesn't export from the bottom, even though it'd be really nice if it did. It, for some reason, doesn't send things straight down. Uh, as you can see, if I place this on here, it'll say machine starting up. And I believe if I put this here on top, which uh, it will receive from the top, by the way. Um, for some reason, it'll say, okay, missing inventory output side. Uh, because... Well, it doesn't send to the bottom. It sends to this little face thing here. Um, so in order to get this to work, we might have to use a pipe. So I'm actually going to probably pipe from here into this. Because um, I don't think the sieve has an auto input from the top. Uh, if we like put an inventory up there, I don't think that would work. We can try. Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. This will not auto input, right? Gravel. No, that'd be really cool if it did. Uh, but it does not. So... What I'm going to do instead is just use an item pipe to send the items from this into here. Now, of course, this has a hopper, so it will automatically take in the cobble that this is producing, and it should work. And it's also receiving power, uh, and the only thing we're going to need is, like, upgrades, right? So this should already start generating. This is missing inventory on output side, but as soon as we get ourselves a pipe there, that might work. Let's just take a look. Let's try an item pipe. And let's see if this is going to function. That is what I want to see. Does that count when we wrench this? Because I don't think it does because these don't have any inventory. I think this was the last time I had played with this mod was, uh, I think, it was a different version. It was uh, all the mods 7 to the sky, I think. I think I had the same issue with this mod. I wish it just sent things differently. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this up higher. One more higher. So that way we can put an inventory like a barrel in front of it. So we'll still get the same thing going on top. Except now we'll place a barrel here and then we'll use the item pipe to send out of this. And so now this should be working. As you can see, the machine is functioning and is going to send that here. And then we'll just send that down into this machine, um, which should work. So uh, wrench this the items out and we should start getting gravel in here and we put our mesh in and there we go everything's working and we now should start receiving all of the material with this automated that's pretty cool that's pretty cool it is very messy but pretty cool now of course knowing me this setup will be made to look extravagant in the future very very clean being just the machines working and i have done this if you want to check out the video uh, i did cover this whole thing with laser io we may not use laser io i uh, this go around but i did use laser io to automate this whole custom sieving process back in all the mod 7 uh to the sky which was a really fun series as well now i definitely want to get some upgrades in this to definitely speed it up uh, so this does require cyan terracotta, which I think is kind of just all out there. It's my favorite terracotta color, uh, but it is just kind of like thrown out there on you. And you're like, wait, what? You have to make cyan terracotta? Um, so that means we need cyan dye, which is just going to be the cactus green, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to need cactus green, which we're going to need our cactus. Uh, thankfully, we farmed a bunch of it from sieving. And uh, the chickens from this that can spawn, they also drop cactus as well when you kill them. Um, but we're going to use that and get ourselves some upgrades. Now, this is going to hold three upgrades. And in the tiers, it says right here, uh, I'm more or less looking at the output rate, but you can see the it can hold one, two, or three of these upgrades per slot. Each one is going to do something different. It's going to process two, four, or eight items, depending on how many cards you have. And it can go up to, on the base tier, 64 RF per tick that it is going to eventually cost. Now, these give us 40 RF per tick, 
So we're gonna run into an RF issue, 100% based off of just one generator. Now what this means is that, well, having just three generators is only gonna be producing roughly 120 FE per tick, and this is going to be needing 128. So we're gonna need 80, we're gonna need roughly four, four of these generators in order to have sufficient power. Um, so I think I'm gonna do four of them uh, and get that set up. Now, this should be able to supply itself once we have all of this running. Uh, I think that's gonna be one of the nice parts about this is having these generators hooked here. We could just simply run a pipe that should automatically pull out the coal that this is gonna be generating. Oh, also cyan dye comes from the appetite from thermal series, which we also have quite a bit of as well. So that's, that's pretty convenient. So yes, all of these upgrades are going to need this. Also gonna need glass. So back into our gold upgrades. Well, we're just gonna craft six of these. As you can see, they only stack by three because, well, they can only hold up to three of these. Um, now we are also gonna run into a problem, I don't, I think with our transfer limit. Oh no, no we're not. The transfer limit without any upgrades is 512. So if you do add upgrades, of course, you're gonna have to worry about the transfer limit. Uh, but since we're only gonna be needing like 120 for this setup, it's not gonna need that much at all. So I'll go ahead and get these turned on. And then let's see what this looks like when we've got these machines set on max upgrades. It's not gonna look like it's going really fast, but it's gonna now be sieving uh, eight items at a time and it's going to be producing and crushing eight items at a time. Now, I believe if we set this to automatically pull, it's only going to be able to pull the one item that can go into this slot and that is coal. Um, so anytime coal is going to go in here, it, it should resupply itself. However, I don't know if it's gonna be 100% self-sustainable, but at this point, it should be very close. And just like that, we have ourselves a very, very basic setup that involves just producing the resources that come from gravel. Um, and so we are producing a little bit more iron and we don't have to do it manually, allowing us to work on other projects. Oh, that's where the fun is happening. Oh man, this is gonna be so nice and is going to make use here soon of our automated systems that we set up over here. So once we actually get some more resources going, it's really going to make use of uh, producing things like uh, all of our in stone and making more netherrack um, coming from these particular setups because we're gonna be able to produce the resources that are needed such as redstone automatically and also glowstone. Now, of course, this diamond uh, chest is only temporary. It is filling up very, very fast. Uh, and we're gonna have to very, very soon upgrade to functional storage, AKA storage drawers. But this is the much more functional one. Now to automate the dust production in this same way, which we're gonna be doing very soon, uh, we'll just need uh, to extend this. We'll have uh, multiple hammers that are gonna go out. Uh, so we'd end up having another hammer here that'd be making sand and then another hammer, or another hammer that's crushing this, making the gravel making sand and then another one crushing it into uh, the dust. Then that dust will get sent to the barrel and then we get sieved and thus we'd have a ton of redstone. So yeah, just like this that I have set up. So now this should be producing dust. Of course, I don't have this, the upgrades in these, um, but the upgrades are definitely in this one. Uh, I could probably though divvy out the upgrades to at least make it a little bit faster per machine. Um, and uh, yeah, this will start producing all kinds of other stuff. I'm gonna take this all out, put it in my main storage system, uh, get it all compressed up, and uh, hopefully get some redstone produced as well. This is just gonna be a lot of nice starting resources uh, from this basically basic farm that is going to allow me to, to progress into further mods, such as getting more power and many other things here to come. So guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope you learned something new. If you did, of course, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, of course, uh, ring that beautiful notification bell so you'll be notified when I publish the next video so you don't miss out on something awesome like, uh, I don't know, making that whole setup look insanely beautiful. So guys, if you've enjoyed, of course, I will see you in the next one. It is now time, however, to thank the supporter of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Killstriker025. 
Thank you so much for supporting over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible and definitely going above and beyond. Thank you so, so very much for your amazing continued support. And of course, guys, if you are interested in supporting, just hop on the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Join the amazing community today and uh, gain access to all kinds of cool perks such as sub servers and uh, all kinds of other things like world downloads and templates and things that we have over there. It's an absolute amazing place to just hang out. Even if you don't support, I absolutely love you. It supports enough just for you joining and hanging out. Guys, I appreciate you. I'll see you, of course, in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.